The Beef Market Update with Ann Dunford on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Haney Farms. Do you need seed? Find us at haneyfarms.com. Okay, Anthony, we're at the Saskatchewan Stock Growers. Uh, if you can believe it, it's the end of May. <laughs> we look outside, if there is all close to a foot of snow on the ground. We're in the Cypress Hills of Saskatchewan. Beautiful ranching country, and apparently uh, summer's not ready to begin. No. <laughs> what are some of the thoughts from the, from the meeting today? Well, first of all, again, in, in agriculture, we always are talking about weather, and uh, here's another classic example. Uh, but in this case, moisture, ranches, grass, uh, dugouts, all those kinds of things. Uh, good news from a weather perspective, because that's one of the things that, uh, whether last year we talked about drought in the U.S. so much, uh, of course, this year moisture conditions are looking better everywhere, including, including in our backyard here. Yeah, kind of a, you know, when we look at the Saskatchewan Stock Growers AGM here today, you know, a lot of optimism, but at the same time a little bit of fear. A lot of guys saying, you know, how long can these high, high prices last for feeder cattle? And a little bit of, you know, it's a naturally sort of pessimistic, sort of conservative group. Have you kind of found that too? Well, and, and again, I think uh, those, those kind of thought processes are understandable. I mean, the number one cure for high prices is high prices, right? So um, these, because of our production cycle and the triggers that trigger us to uh, expand or to liquidate or are classic. So when you get strong prices and return to profitability, even though it's just returned, um, you know, again, there's there's skepticism about how long. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest that this group is uh, is uh, you know wildly bullish about uh, uh, this you know kind of price levels. They're they're very cautious, as you said. Yeah. And so when we look, when when this the stock growers are looking towards uh, you know a lot of talk about fall and kind of what's going to happen. What do you think are some of the, the items that they're kind of really, really looking at in some of those, those key indicators? Well, I think you're, you're going to see things like uh, feed cost. And, you know, I'm going to talk this afternoon a bit about the difference between U.S. and Canadian feed costs. I mean, most of the producers here today are producers that will likely market their cattle. They, they probably um, aren't finishing them somewhere. And so those cattle could easily flow into the U.S. if, if corn does trend lower, as the futures are suggesting. And uh, if Western Canadian feed grains continue to remain as high as they have been, so we we're going to see some interesting shifts in where these cattle flow. There's a lot of unknowns. We won't know them until we get there this fall. But uh, again, this group's ready. They they understand. Uh, it feels like higher prices, most certainly. So it feels good, but a cautious optimism. Well, a, a huge exit of feeder cattle to the U.S. could really lead to some interesting scenarios for the for the Canadian feed yard owner. Feed yard owner and cattle feeder. I mean, I think this afternoon you'll hear CCA President Martin Onrad talk about infrastructure in the industry, and we know supplies are tight. We've got the smallest cow herd in 20 years, and uh, and the implications of that whole issue of supply right through the chain. So you're going to hear that talked about this afternoon, and I think it is important to understand. Um, yeah, we sell to the highest market, but there are implications depending on where that market might be. Well, and maybe you can spell it out for us. But you know, we're, we're talking about we have a we have a, we have a shortage of supply. We got tight we got tight supply. We also have a lot of inf we do have a lot of infrastructure. Um, yeah, we're talking about building more feed yards. You know, especially in Saskatchewan with some of the irrigation projects that are going on. How does that kind of spell out? Well, again, I think uh, efficiencies. Right, we heard lots of talk this morning about consolidation. Um, so sometimes expansion is in the area of consolidation or removing old infrastructure for new, that kind of thing. But again, I think uh, somebody's got to have a pretty sharp pencil to sit down and say, I'm, I'm going to expand my infrastructure of a feedlot or a packing plant in that kind of environment. So um, it's, it's no surprise. We've talked about these smaller cow numbers for some time now. So now we're, we're seeing the, the fruit of that. 